Welcome to lecture 36, Brief Look at Multidimensional Arrays. So up until now, all the arrays that we've been working with have all been one-dimensional arrays. Basically what that means is if you have, pretend you have a, some kind of grid with rows and columns, a one-dimensional array is basically one horizontal row. So for example, if we had an, uh, an array like int my array equals new, I'll just say equals five, six, seven. So this list right here, this array, is just one row. It's five, six, seven, that's it. It's one dimensional. In this lecture, we're gonna look at multi-dimensional arrays, and more specifically, we're only gonna look at two-dimensional arrays, which is basically just another dimension. So what would that be? It basically adds in columns in this case. There's two dimensions. Instead of just one dimension, like X, we're now adding in Y, X and Y. So we can have two dimensions. It basically makes some kind of grid. For example, if this was our list in the console, five, six, seven, let's add spaces. That's a regular array. Let's say we had now a two dimensional array. It could possibly look like this now. So as you can see, now we have rows and columns. So it basically adds, allows us to add more data inside of an array. However, multidimensional arrays can get a bit confusing. So that's why I just want to go over a brief look and just look at them briefly, just so that you can see how they look and how they sort of work. So there are actually two types of multidimensional arrays that I want to cover. The first is a rectangular array, and the second is a jagged array. So I just want to make like two basic sample for each of them. I don't want to actually do an exercise because I don't want to cover this too much. I just want to show you two quick examples so that you see it once at least. And then if you ever see it in other people's code, you can understand it. So, okay, what is the difference between a rectangular and jagged array? A rectangular array, each row has the same amount of columns. That's why it's considered rectangular. So for example, in this structure right here, this would be a rectangular array because each row has the same amount of columns. So each row, right, has three columns. So in the first one, it's five, six, seven. That's the first dimension. If this was just a regular array, that would be just that one dimensional array. By adding two dimensions, now we add these other columns in. So each row, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven. They all have three numbers in each row. That means the columns and the rows are the I mean, each row has the same amount of columns. If I did something like this and added, okay, on the second row, now there's a 9 on the second column, this would not be rectangular anymore because obviously, one, it doesn't look like a rectangle, and two, the this, this second row does not have the same amount of columns as all the other rows, so that's not rectangular. So basically, this is actually sort of a jagged array. A jagged array is basically an array of arrays. So you could think of a jagged array as every dimension or every row has another array. See, this is just an array and every row is just another set of numbers. Whereas a jagged array, every row is a brand new array and you can make it as big as you want. So you could have like the first row, three numbers, the second row, 10 numbers, the, the third row, one number, and that's how big the entire array actually is. So that's why it's jagged because it makes these jagged edges by uh, when you actually draw it out. So let's actually start with creating a rectangular array and look at what is the syntax for that. So it's actually not too hard. The, sy the syntax is almost the same as a one dimensional array. So for rectangular we say int. Now inside the square brackets for declaring a multi-dimensional array, we have to add for the first part a comma. Now, that means that this is a two-dimensional array. If I add another comma, now this would be a three-dimensional array, a four-dimensional array, a five-dimensional array. And yes, that, it gets very complex, and most people don't use that many dimensions. Um, if people do use multi-dimensional arrays, they only really go to one dimension, I mean two dimensions. So by adding one comma, that's a two-dimensional array, rows and columns, that's it. So that's the first part. That, this is how you declare a multi-dimensional array. Now I give it a name. So I'm going to say my array equals new int. Now for this one, we have to add the number of columns and the number of rows. It's actually rows and then columns. 
So, for example, we'll do 3 by 4. Notice how I put a comma in between the numbers to show what length each dimension should be. Remember with the regular array, I only put one number in there, but now it's two dimensions. I have to put two numbers. Then I close it, semicolon. So, this created a 3 by 4 diagram, which looks like this. If I have a comment, okay, ready? Actually, let's do regular comment. So, it would be a 3 by 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we have three rows, and each row has four stars. That's four columns. So, that's the picture. So, basically, where everywhere you see a star in this picture, you can actually put an integer because this is an integer array. So that's what a multi-dimensional array looks like. It builds this kind of diagram. It kind of looks like three separate arrays all put into one. Okay. So once I have my array, so now I created this array, and there's all these empty spots. It's actually 12 empty spots because it's basically row times column. But how do I actually fill them up? How do I give values to them? So it's just like all the other methods that we do with regular arrays. So there are the shorthand initializers, which I'll show you here in a second. But if I want to do it the manually way, I can go my array, open up your square brackets. Now it's the location. So the first location would be 0, 0. And then I give it a value. So equals 5, let's say. That's the first value in the, so that's the first row and the first column. So if I want to do the same row with the next one over in that row, I'm going to say my array. 0 sub 1 equals 6, 0 sub 2 equals 7, and then 0 sub 3 equals 8. So there are four numbers in the first row. So the first row is 0, it's row column, and then there's four, so then 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's all the first row. Now if I want to do the second row, it's basically that again. However, now I change these also once. So now that's the second row. And there are three rows, so I do it one more time. Two, 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 two. So now we have three rows. Each have four columns. Now they all have a number. Now this may look a little confusing trying to understand this, but it's basically just a simple grid. X and Y coordinate. These are basically the coordinates on the grid. So what would, what would this look like as a shorthand? Doing the shorthand. Remember, the shorthand for an integer array would be something like my a equals 5, 6, 7, right? So this is the shorthand, but how would you do this with a multidimensional array? Basically, it would be the same exact thing. We'll go ahead and just make it a multidimensional array by putting that comma there. Now we have to basically segment it. So when you do this, this is the entire array. Now we need to define the rows and the columns. So every row will be another set of square or curly, curly braces. So this will be the first row. So I'll do 5, 6, 7, 8. Close that. Now I put a comma, and that, that's, that's just the first row. So that whole row is grouped together, comma. It's like the next number, but now it's the next row. 5, I'll do enter. 5, 6, 7, 8. Close that, comma. And then 5, 6, 7, 8, close that. So basically, these two right here are the same exact thing. This is the shorthand of a multidimensional or two-dimensional rectangular array. And this is the, the manual way of actually going into each element and assigning it a number. These are the two different ways of doing it, of doing any array. So I'm going to remove the shorthand one for now. So this is we created the array and now we assigned it some random numbers in each element location but how do we actually display the whole thing you know when we had a, a one-dimensional array we just built a simple for loop and we iterated over the whole length and then we printed it by accessing the, the, uh, the element at that position and it basically is the same exact thing with the multi-dimensional array except it's slightly different if you remember from the last section on loops, there was a lecture on nested loops. And I said that, I mentioned that when we get to multidimensional arrays, that's what we're going to use to actually access multidimensional arrays. Because think about it, a loop 
is only one dimension. It has one integer, basically, that goes from zero to a number. So it's going to go zero to something. And it's just going to cover one section. So maybe it does zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. Maybe that's what the loop does. However, there's another problem. There's another number, zero, one, two. So that's the reason why we need a nested loop. The outer loop of the nested loop will be doing the rows. And then the inner loop of the nested loop will be doing the actual columns in each row. So the outer loop will be going 0, 1, 2. And the inner one will be going 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we'll reset 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. This is the same exact way how we actually printed that rectangle when we did that program in that chapter. When we, we built a program that you can draw out a square by putting in your your row and your columns basically and it drew it out this is exactly how it does it it basically works just like this so let's go ahead and print these values how are we going to do it so we're going to start off by making our outer for loop for int i equals zero as long as i is less than so what is our row count our row count is three in this case so i'm going to say as long as i is less than three i plus plus because remember the outer loop is responsible for changing each row so it goes 0 1 2 so there's only three rows now the inner loop for int j equals 0 as long as j is less than 4 because there's four columns j plus plus so basically the outer loop every single time the outer loop runs once the inner loop will run its entire duration so only one iteration of this one so i is 0 this for loop starts, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I mean 0, 1, 2, 3, then it breaks out, and then the outer loop will go up by 1, and then I will be 1, and then it does it again, and then it does the loop again, and again, and again. So the outer loop goes one iteration, and the inner loop will do its full entirety every single time. So that's how we actually can get this to work. So let's say I wanted to print out the values now. I'm going to say C out, constant means constant right rate line. Then I'm going to actually print out the value. So I'm going to say my array sub i comma j. So i is the row number going 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And then j is the actual column number, 0 to 3. And now we put in. So now this will print the value. So it should go 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's run it and see. 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it works. So this is how it's printing it. If I wanted to make it look more like the actual rectangle, how it would look, I'll just change these to write statements so it prints on the same line. And then after every single time it does one row, I'll print out a new line. So now you can actually see this is what it looks like. This is, this is one single array holding all this data. One array is making all this data. Whereas with this, a one-dimensional array, that can only hold basically one row. So multi-dimensional arrays have multiple dimensions, and you can do things like this. Okay, so this is the rectangular array. Let's go ahead and comment that out for now. The last one I want to show you, like I said, is the jagged array. And I'm just going to go ahead and create it and create one array of it. We're not, we're not going to loop through it or anything. We're, I just want to create one of them. So, how do we do it? The syntax is slightly different. So, to create an array, a jagged array, it is int, like always. Now, instead of going like this with a comma, a two-dimensional jagged array would be like this. So, it's another set of square braces. So, you just add that next set right next to it. So, that's my data type now. And I'll say my array uh, equals new int and then your set of square braces now we need to put a number somewhere but we're only going to put one number so like I said a jagged array has rows and each row can have a different amount of columns so we don't know how many columns that each row is going to have at this point so what we need to do is we're only specifying how many rows there's going to be at this point currently. So I'm going to say three rows. So I'm just saying there's only three rows, but we don't know the length of the columns yet. And we're going to, we're going to give them the length every single time we give them a new value. So this is where it gets a little confusing. That's why I'm only going to touch on this, and for now at least. 
So I need to give each row a new set of columns. So I need basically, like I said, a jagged array is an array of arrays. So every single element is basically another array. So how do I do that? Every element needs to be a new array. So I need to say, for example, my array sub zero. So for the first row, the first row, I'm going to say that the first row is equal to a brand new array of a certain length because this is an array of array. So I'm going to say equals new int array for, I'll give it four columns. So the first row in this multidimensional jagged array is a new array of four. I know this is confusing, that's why I'm going slow. Let me do another one. So my array sub one, I could say has 10 elements because it's a brand new array. A jagged array is an array of arrays. And there's one more row because there's three rows that we defined. So my array sub two equals new int array with only two elements in it. So this is how this is different than a rectangular array because a rectangular array, every row has the same amount of columns. But in this one, every row has different amount of columns because each row is basically a brand new array that can have its own length. So now if I wanted to actually give each row some values, I can use the shorthand notation by going 5, 6, 7, 8. So now this array has 5, 6, 7, 8 in stored into it because there's four elements. And I could do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then 2, 1, 2, something like that. So now all my elements in the entire multidimensional jagged array have values. So I guess I might as well show you how you actually print it out. It is slightly different, but it, I mean, it's, it's the same principle. You just need to think a little bit. So let's say we wanted to now print all these values out. How would we do that? So obviously we need to use loops again. So we're going to have our main loop for int i equals zero as long as i is less than what? So what is i less than? This is the row count. So I'm going to plug in that 3 right there. i++. plus plus. So that's the first part. Now we know how many rows and we're iterating over our row count. We actually now need to iterate over our, our individual arrays. So the first row has 4 in it. But I don't want to manually put that 4 in because every single one has different lengths. So I'm going to use the actual length property of each ray inside of the each element. I know this is confusing. So for example, I'm going to say for int j equals 0 as long as j is less than my array sub i dot length j plus plus. So if I read this back, I'm every, the outer loop is going over each row, up and down basically. The inner loop is going left and right on each row. So I need the length for each row because it's not rectangular, so I don't know it's four every single time. So I need to get the length of whatever that specific array is because each of them is different. So I get the that current array by what row we're on. So if our first row is zero, I'm getting that length of that row by going my array sub i dot length. So if there are four in this row, it will automatically do four for this loop. If there's 10, then it will do 10 automatically. So then I'll do the print line again, console dot, I mean, it goes to console dot write my array. So when I, when I actually display it, I don't do the comma again. I do it like how I did before. So I'm going to say my array sub i then j like that so it, there's separate square brackets for every dimension in a jagged array like that and then i'll just go ahead and add that right line for every new line and let's see what happens now and as you can see five six seven eight one to ten one two 